In the last section, we spoke a little bit about the React and Redux side of this application. Let's now continue by working on the first feature of this application. So recall that whenever a user adds a video to be converted, the screen should automatically update to show the conversion UI over here on the right hand side. In addition, we should show the list of videos that are currently pending conversion. So these are all videos that are currently waiting for the user to actually click convert down here and then start the conversion process. So let's see how far into this process the current application is. I'll open up the Electron application. I'll click on the UI to get the file picker to appear. And then I'll select a video that I already have stashed on here. Now when I do so, the screen clearly does change over to this other UI, but the list of video files is not actually displayed to the user. So that's going to be the first thing that we're trying to accomplish here. We want to show a list of all the different video files to the user. Now there is one little trick to this and that I want to mention that's going to kind of complicate how we do the implementation here. Notice that on every single video file, we display the length of the video, so how long in minutes and seconds the actual video is. If you recall back to the first application that we worked on, we've already gone through this process of figuring out how long a video is. On the React or on the web side of things, we can get a path to the actual video file as it exists on our hard drive. And then we can hand that path off to FFmpeg to get some video metadata or some data about the duration of the actual video. So that's going to be what we try to accomplish in this section. We're going to essentially re-implement the first app that we built inside this course, but inside a very different type of architecture. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about exactly how we're going to do this. Okay, so here we go. So whenever a user selects a video for conversion, we need to somehow determine the length of the video or essentially to get some metadata describing the video. To do so, we're going to ask the Electron side of our application to figure out the actual video length. So we're going to communicate some event from the React or the web side of our Electron app over to the Electron side of the app. Remember that whenever we're talking about con communication between these two different sides of our application, we immediately want to be thinking about the IPC or Interprocess Communication System. So when I say, ask Electron side of app to discover video length, what I'm really saying here is make use of the IPC system, send an IPC event. On the Electron side of the application, we'll make use of FFmpeg to get the video metadata, just as we did in that previous uh, application that we worked on. And then once Electron has determined some the video metadata, we will emit another event back over to the React side of our application that says, okay, here is the actual video metadata, here's how long each video is. So essentially, we need to emit one event to ask Electron to, re to figure out some of the video met metadata, and then we will receive an event back over from Electron side once that data has been determined. So let's get to it. Inside of my code editor, I'm going to open up my actions index.js file. So I've got src directory, actions directory, index.js. So this is where if you're not familiar with Redux, things are gonna start to seem just a little bit weird, a little bit complicated. Again, I can't say it enough. Please don't sweat it if, you do not, if you're not familiar with the Redux side of things. It's totally fine. Just follow along as best you can. And you're still gonna learn a whole lot about how to use Electron and you'll probably pick up a couple of interesting facts about Electron and or excuse me, React and Redux along the way. So inside of this index.js file, you'll see a single function inside of here that has a to-do note on it. It says, communicate to the main process that videos have been added and are pending conversion. So this is going to be a perfect location right here for us to use the IPC system to emit event that says, hey, the list of or we've received some list of videos here. Please determine some metadata about them. So inside of here is where we will make our first IPC call to send this event on over to Electron side. To do so, we're going to use the very familiar process that we've used throughout this uh, entire course. At the top, we'll first start off by importing the IPC renderer library from Electron. 
So we'll import IPC renderer from Electron. Now I want to remind you again that on React side of code or whenever we are writing React, we traditionally use uh, ES5 or ES2015, or excuse me, ES6 or ES2015 modules. And that module system is characterized by the use of the import statement right here. When we use the require syntax, which looked a little bit like this, if you'll recall, this is the use of the common JS module system, which is traditionally used on the Node.js or the Electron side of our application. So in both cases, we are importing the Electron library, but the syntax that we use is slightly different depending on the environment that we're writing our code in. Okay, so we've got our IPC render right here. Inside of this function right here, we will send an event over to the Electron side of the application. So we'll say IPC render dot send videos colon added and then we're going to send along the list of videos that were added to the application as a second argument so we'll say simply videos right here now you might be asking Stephen where does this list of videos come from well unfortunately this is part of the redux side of things so if you're familiar with redux you'll know that we can call action creators which is what this function right here is with some number of arguments. And so whenever a user drops, drags and drops, or selects a number of videos, this function right here is called with the videos that the user selected. So that's where the list of videos is coming from. Again, this is kind of the nasty part of Redux where you kind of have to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Regardless, if you can just accept that, yeah, this function is called with the list of videos, well, fantastic, then everything is fine. Okay, so that's step one. We're currently emitting this event, telling Electron that we've added some number of videos. Let's continue in the next section where we will wire up the Electron side of our application to determine the metadata about this particular list of videos and determine the actual video length of each video. So take a quick break and I'll see you in just a second.